Good evening. My name is Retta Washington McCoy. I am the first vice president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women in Dallas Metropolitan uh, Chapter. We want to welcome you this evening to our program, Sisternomics Session 2. This evening, we will be talking with you about saving and investing. This evening's program will go as follows. We'll discuss the session purpose. We'll hear remarks from our president, introduce our speaker, hear from our speaker, have a, a, a question and answer period, a wrap up, and then a thank you and call to action. At this time, we do want to share a little bit with you about what Sisternomics is and why it's important uh, to our organization. Sisternomics is our premier economic empowerment session. It is a philosophy that we as an organization hold true to. During this evening's session, you will learn a lot about how to manage credit, banking choices in your neighborhood, what a credit score is and how you will improve it, loans and credit cards and how to best utilize those, saving for a rainy day, and then learn about resources for where you can go for help. At this time, I would like to introduce you to our president, Ms. Sonia Kirby. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are so delighted to have you with us, and we are looking forward to this exciting program. But while I have you and I have your attention, I want to take a few moments to share a little bit about our organization. The National Coalition of 100 Black Women Incorporated is a 40-year-old advocacy organization founded in 1981 with 62 chapters across the United States and over 3,500 members. Our mission is to advocate on behalf of Black women and girls to promote leadership development and gender equity in the areas of health, education, and economic empowerment. Our vision is to see Black women and girls live in a world where socioeconomic inequity simply does not exist. The award-winning Dallas Metropolitan Chapter was chartered in June of 2018. Our vision was to be a voice in the community and address the concerns of Black women and girls in the Dallas area. We have been working over the past three years to bring that vision to life, and I am honored to serve as the current president of our organization. One of the ways we advocate is through programming like what you're experiencing tonight. We provide education and resources to the community through our programs. And we cannot do that alone. We have the support of great partners. On a national level, our organization has strategic partnerships with the Coca-Cola Company, Major League Soccer, Walgreens, and tonight's sponsor, the Truist Foundation. We are proud to launch our fall series on economic empowerment, Sisternomics, in partnership with tonight's sponsor, the Truist Foundation. If you're not familiar with Truist, they are committed to the purpose of inspiring and building better lives and communities. The Truist Foundation's grants and activities focus on leadership development, economic mobility, thriving communities, and educational equity. Sisternomics, as you heard from our first vice president, focuses on financial literacy, family wealth building, and entrepreneurship. We are excited to provide financial literacy programming with the support of our national partnership with the Truist Foundation that speaks directly to the concerns of Black women and girls here in the Dallas area. Our desire is not only to educate, but to encourage financial well being and financial freedom to make the choices that allow for the enjoyment of life. We appreciate you joining us tonight, and I commend each and every one of you for investing in your financial future. If you're watching us via Facebook Live tonight, please tag this broadcast and share it with your friends and family. I invite you to stay connected with us to learn more about future programming. On December 2nd, we'll have part three of our Sisternomics Economic Security for Black Women, where we'll be sharing basic money management tips. And on December 16th, we'll also be sharing help, helping businesses survive COVID-19. 
So I, again, want to thank you for joining us tonight, and I am going to turn over to my coalition sister, Ogeti Dunn, who will introduce tonight's speaker. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome, everybody. It's my privilege today to welcome Dale Duransburg, Jr. as our speaker today. He is a Chicago native and a graduate of Columbia College. He's a professional speaker, certified estate advisor, and chartered senior financial planner. In 1997, he founded Duransburg International LTD, which is a professional sponsor of Learning Institute for Financial Education. His team of instructors specialize in financial education, wealth accumulation, asset protection, and small business planning for middle-class America. In addition to creating Duransburg International, Dale is the author of the ABCs of Wealth, a common sense strategy for achieving the American dream. Please welcome Mr. Dale Duransburg to our virtual floor. Thank you very much. And I have the privilege and an honor to actually have the uh, opportunity to actually speak to, you know, black professional women who are close to my heart. So I want to say that uh, this is a, a cherished opportunity for us and our organization. Uh, and want to let you know that we are available to answer all your questions, all your concerns, and all your comments, 24 hours, 365 days of the year. So with that said, I want to jump right in. And actually, I have my uh, team with me tonight because we want to give you the best of the best. And if uh, Nick, you're there, Nick, can you hop on real quickly and uh, give them the uh, housekeeping rules that we have so we can enjoy this masterful financial education training tonight? Sure, sure. Can everyone hear me? Yes, good, sir. good, good, good. Good evening. My name is Nick Westbrooks. I am the business manager for DJ The Money Coach. And uh, before DJ starts his presentation, I have a few housekeeping items that we uh, run through for all of our workshops. Uh, and there are only three. The first one is to uh, make sure your phones are on vibrate so there, there are no distractions. Number two, make sure you have a note-taking vehicle, whether that's pen or paper, uh, a notes application in your mobile device or on your computer. Uh, as DJ mentioned, he will answer all of your questions uh, at the end of his presentation. So uh, you can write down those questions that you may have. And also DJ will be providing for you specific strategies that you can implement right away tonight. You know, So you will want to take notes uh, for those. And lastly, DJ brings a lot of energy. You will not be bored with this presentation. So this presentation is audience participation. And uh, you will participate uh, by engaging with uh, DJ through the chat box uh, with a, a little, little bit of a nonverbal call and response. <laughs> so those are our housekeeping items. So without further ado, I will turn things back over to DJ so he can start his presentation. All right, all right, that's right. So hey, we want you to relax. We're gonna have fun. It's gonna be fast paced. And like Nick said, at times it's gonna be high value because the passion is what we're gonna bring to you, okay? So I'm gonna open up and share my screen with you ladies. And we're gonna get this party started. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So welcome to the seven spheres of money, financial education. What are the seven spheres of money? It is accounting insurance, banking, financial planning, real estate, estate planning, and legal. And what I would challenge you ladies to understand is that from cradle to grave, you're gonna go through these seven spheres of money if you like it or not, or if you know it or not. And typically what happens is that we generally are reactionary versus proactionary. What do I mean by that? We're actually going to show you what these seven spheres of money are all about. And if I can do this, oh, hold up. See, look at that. So you might have, no, 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 let's stop here. All right, let's cancel. All right, all right here. Let's see. All right, so why DJ the money? Well, everybody has a story, ladies and gentlemen, and I have one that I think you can be able to relate to. I went to college and at the young age of 22, I had $20,000 worth of student loan debt. And by the time I was 28, I had accumulated $40,000 worth of credit consumer debt. 
That's right. Credit card debt. And I masked most of that, ladies, while I was in college because I was one of the first people in my family to go to college. And by the time I was 29, I had a combined total of $60,000 worth of debt. Now, I know what you're probably saying. That's not a lot of debt right now, DJ, but we're talking about, and I'm going to you know, date myself, this was like in 1992. So if you actually parallel this to the value of money, money actually doubles by inflation every 10 years. This is equivalent to about $140,000 worth of debt in 2021. And I had to amass this amazing credit score, a 525 credit score. And not only did I amass that great resume at that time, ladies, I actually was declined for a home loan. Even though I had professional income at the time, about $50,000, $60,000 a year, I don't remember because it's been about 25 years ago. And then a couple of years later, I was denied a small business loan. And like your president said, this is about entrepreneurship as well. So instead of me playing victim, ladies and gentlemen, I decided, I mean, ladies, I decided to become the victor, okay? And I read a book called The Road to Wealth that was written by Susie Orman. A lot of people don't like Susie Orman, but you know what? She was a lifesaver for me. She created this book, 700 pages, and I didn't read the whole book at the time. I read the book that was most important to my life, which was about personal credit. And I learned how credit was working against me and then with time, I apply these four dirty little words. So the first thing I want you to do right now in the chat box, I want you to put in, DJ, what are those four dirty little words? And Nick, let me know if they put that in there, because if they're not, that means they're not participating. They won't get any free gifts tonight. So dirty word number one is discipline, okay? Dirty word number two is accountability. And what does that mean? That means you have to find somebody that's licensed and certified to hold you accountable to the things you need to do, not what you want to hear. Dirty little word number three is you need to find a system, a proven system that works. And then dirty word number four is you need to put your head down and get that work done. So the system tonight is the seven spheres of money system. And within 12 months in an analog, analog world, ladies, I got my credit score to 712 months. That was prior to Google, Yahoo, Facebook. This is when you really had to go to the library and find professionals. Okay, again, I'm dating myself, but within 24 months, my FICO score rose to 800, and my FICO score has not been under 800 for 15 consecutive years. Not only did I take that $60,000 of debt and didn't file bankruptcy because nobody put a gun in my head to actually tell me to get into debt, I took ownership of my debt, ladies, and I got totally debt-free in 2002. It took me about four years to wipe out the equivalency of about $140,000 today that for me was $60,000. And six years prior, I bought myself out of the rat race and I earned $150,000 plus passive income through owning business, real estate, and leveraging the tax laws through entity structure. And I eclipsed a $1 million net worth. And this is all certified because ladies and gentlemen, all the mistakes I made, I was actually audited by the IRS in 2010 and they documented that I made over $400,000 personally in my income. So these are the facts, all right? So with that said, I wanna show you right now, I still have an 827 credit score out of 850. So I don't take advice from only three people. I want you to write this down, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, I only take advice from people who where I'm striving to go in business. That means they have achieved seven figures in business and have a strong six-figure passive income. I don't take advice from my mom, my dad, my auntie, Uncle Joe, Uncle Bob. If they're not making six figures passive income and have a seven-figure certified network, I don't even listen to them. Number two, leadership. I only follow leaders. One of the core leaders I follow is a gentleman named John C. Maxwell. Look him up. He's written multiple books on leadership. He is the four foremost leader in leadership. He wrote a book called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, and I've been a member of his club called the Enjoy Club for 15 plus years. And number three, I don't take advice from people who are not spiritual leaders. So if you, you know, subscribe to Jesus Christ, Buddha, Allah, I advise you to emulate, don't duplicate the principles of those three advisory councils. And in the book I read, the Bible, it says he or she who counsels himself is a fool. So don't be foolish, okay? So here's some of the highlights. Over the past 20 years, two decades, we've created some major successful conferences 
in the seven spheres of money. We created a course called Three Steps to Success. Actually teaches entrepreneurs and small business owners and professionals how to actually create wealth through owning businesses, investing in real estate, leveraging the tax laws, and creating a proper entity structure. I have been in front of tens of thousands of people over the past 20 years. And I've actually sat down with 25,000 individuals and helped them with financial education. So as you can see here, I wanna challenge you to look up eWomen Network, because I'm proud to say that about 65% of the people we work with are professional women. And eWomen Network is the largest professional network in North America and Canada. Also been a keynote speaker at One Woman Conference, and I've authored this amazing book called The ABCs of Wealth, A Common Sense Strategy Achieving the American Dream. And like you guys with the MLS sponsor, I actually sponsored the largest MLS Manchester United event in Houston, Texas in 2010 and had over 80,000 participants, and I was one of the core sponsors. I actually raised over $40,000 for the YMCA and for the local charities in my community out of my resources and the Title I programs. So in addition to that, I work with Crystal uh, Stewart, who is the 2008 um, Miss America, and I've also done speaking engagements and the NBA as well. So these are some of my credentials. And last but not least, with my partner, Melvin Hobson, I actually took a small $50,000 investment and turned it into $40 million of assets under management. And we work with some little companies right here in Texas called HEB. If you ever heard of HEB, put a HEB in the chat box right now. I am the only proprietor that I know of that actually created a $6 million contract in the bill pay business with HEB. And right now today, Noreen North, who runs the financial service part of HEB in San Antonio, is still good friends with me. So let's move right ahead. And let me introduce you to my partner of 18 years, Melvin Hobson. Melvin Hobson has a great load of background. So he started out, has a BS degree from Michigan State University. He has a master's degree as well. He also is a registered investment advisor, a certified estate planner, and a charter senior, finance, charter senior financial planner. And most importantly for you ladies in the audience, he's a senior professional human resource certified professional, which is the highest certification. And Melvin and I go across the country doing open enrollment, and we are a third party advocate for employees to create the relationship of fiduciality between the custodian and the employer to make sure you get treated right. Melvin also has a series seven, which actually gives you the ability to invest in all types of sophisticated stocks and derivatives and options. And Melvin has a series 65 as a registered investment advisor, which manages your assets under management in your 403B, your 403Ones, and your 457s, which is deferred comp. So right now I'm gonna bring Melvin on and Melvin's gonna give you some tips that you should know about if you never see us again. Melvin, come on on and talk to these wonderful ladies tonight. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much, Adele. Yes, my master's was in human resources, labor relations management. I know some of you can really appreciate that. And I just mentioned that because right now we're in November and we're talking about, or you're talking about the water station, even if it's at home, open enrollment. What benefits should I take advantage of this year going into 2022? So I want to give you a couple uh, quick little tidbits. Regardless of whether it's a 401k, 403b, 457, as an employee, if your company is offering a 401k type of uh, program, then there's some free money there that you need to take advantage of. So whether it's a, you know, if you invest six percent, they invest six, they'll invest 100 percent dollar for dollar. That's free money. You're not going to get any money freer than that uh, on the planet. So take advantage of that and start preparing for your retirement. Also, uh, you may wonder, should I take the PPO, HMO, or the uh, HSA, which is health uh, savings uh, account? And I would say for you that if you are a person or if you have a family that tends to get sick, get hurt, or clumsy, you may want to stay with the PPO or the HMO because uh, you're more likely to use uh, go to the doctor more often. But for those of you who are rather rather healthy, 
a whole lot doesn't happen to you, the HSA will act like a 401k because you can just store money in that and down the road, you can transfer that over to your IRA. Uh, and that's just a way for you who are healthy types to take advantage of the benefits that your company has to offer. HSAs also tend to be cheaper for the corporation, so they're more than happy for you to take advantage of the SSA. Doesn't really matter whether you're exempt or non-exempt, uh, but all those benefits, dental, vision, health, uh, they're part of your non-monetary uh, benefits package. So when they're talking to you about how important you are and how much you're worth, they're including those numbers in there as well. So definitely, you want to take advantage of those to help and be good for you and your family. Secret number two, uh, we talked about deductions. We talked about uh, there's a lot going on with the federal government. Uh, and assuming that they can balance the fiscal budget by the summer, uh, you're looking at more money in your paycheck. If you earned uh, over 50000 it may be as much as $300 a month that can be added to uh, your family's coffers, and you can start working with that. If you make over one hundred grand, it could be as much as uh, uh, 600 more a month uh, added to uh, your, your paycheck. I, I am not a, a tax accountant or a CPA, so definitely you want to talk to those folks when it comes to how to plan your deductions. Uh, I always felt like for myself, if I claim more deductions in the first half of the year and then uh, when exempt in December, I sort of give my money some myself some extra money at the end of the year for Christmas because Uncle Sam is taking 70 to 80 percent uh, of the money that they should be taking out within the first five months of the year. Uh, so they want to get theirs up front. And whether you realize this or not, the money that you give to the government and the money that you give back the following year is a tax free loan to the government. So I don't know how much you love the government. But I'll put it to you this way. If you're slow in paying your, your taxes, they'll charge you 18%. If you're uh, fast in paying your taxes, you're giving Uncle Sam a 0% interest loan, uh, and that's not making you any money whatsoever. So that's just the understanding you want to think that there. Uh, number three, we talked about this a little bit, your HSA. Uh, if you're not one to go to the doctor a lot, it's definitely a way for you to take some of that money that you're putting into your uh, health savings account, and you can use that later on when you're closer to retirement age. Uh, the contributions uh, will change and vary based on your organization uh, and what they offer, uh, but uh, definitely we can talk more about that on your individual uh, conversations uh, uh, with me. Okay. Dale? Dale? Secret number four. Go ahead, Dale. You're on mute. You're on mute. All right. There you go. Okay. Okay. There we go. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? All right. Yes. So, secret number four, ladies, is that you got to have a plan. You have to proactively work with at least three of the seven spheres of money professionals. Number one, if you are a professional income earner, an entrepreneur, you should have a relationship with a certified professional accountant, public accountant. If you make $50,000 or less, you should work with a tax accountant that is really good at what he or she does. Second, you should have a relationship with a certified planner like Melvin Hobson. And third, you should have a business coach who has experience in business and entrepreneurship and employee, taking them from employee to professional to small business owner like DJ the Money Coach. Now, how do you get those things all set up properly to know that you're acting accordingly to the plan for success? Well, we do a little thing here at the Seven Spheres of Money. We actually take you on what we call a risk tolerance questionnaire. And what a risk, a risk tolerance, a tolerance questionnaire is, is that just like going to the doctor, we're going to figure out where you are based on the Security Exchange Commission and five different categories of investors. Are you a conservative investor, a growth investor, a balanced investor, an aggressive investor, or are you a balanced investor? And you need to know this. So the reason why you need to know this is because when you're group participation in your 401k, 403b, 401a, and your deferred comp, you don't have to take this questionnaire, but it's a requirement because it's exempt. But when you're doing it on your personal investments with a professional, this is a requirement. So that's the first thing we do for you. The second thing we do for you is when you go to see your doctor, 
the doctor usually administers a health analysis before they administer any type of services. So we do what's called a financial analytical report and we check everything in your financial house. That's from your wills, your trust, your emergency funds, your deferred comp, your college saving plan, your debt freedom plan, et cetera. Once we do that, we bring back all this information and provide you with a 14 page comprehensive financial education plan. And now we'll review that information for the first three quarters of the financial year, see what your earnings are to end for the final year of 2021. But then most importantly, we'll start planning for all of 2022 and 2023. And if you can apply those four dirty little words, ladies, number one, discipline. Number two, accountability. Number three, plug into the right system. And number four, put the work in. You will succeed in any financial endeavor that you are striving to be successful at. If that makes sense to you, ladies, please put a five in the chat box right now. Can you put a five in the chat box for me, please? So why DJ the money coach and the Duransburg Seven Spheres of Money team? Number one, we're all free. We are all totally working for ourselves. I got free in 2002 and I became a seven figure earner in 2008. Hashtag fire my boss. We are all certified six figure income earners and we have built four seven figure businesses successfully. But let me tell you this, ladies, we actually have failed in eight other businesses. So we started 12 businesses collectively, but we failed forward and made four of them successful. Everybody on our team has a minimum of 15 years of special skill sets. There are no generalists on our team. We have an average of 25 years of expertise as entrepreneurs. We are students of business and educators, and we have a proven track record. So with that said, your first assignment for tonight is I want you to read what's called the ABCs of Wealth. So if you can see this, it's called the ABCs of Wealth, the Common Sense Strategy to Achieve an American Dream. And the reason why this is important and it's not a self-promotion, this is actually 20 years of me actually sitting down with 25,000 people that look like you, that have a variety of different challenges, and we figured out how to help them out categorically and successfully on a way to what I call a pom-pom lifestyle. That's plenty of money and peace of mind. So if you want the pom-pom lifestyle, put pom-pom in the chat box right now and say, DJ, bring me the plan because that's what we're about to do. So let's bring up and dial up this plan right now. So here we go. So with that said, we're going to take that information and we're going to show you through the book with strategies, what are letters in the alphabet. And one of our strategies as a person to know how to interact with people is called kill them with kindness. That means be assertive, but be, you know, pleasant. You know, you get more bees with honey than vinegar. And if you do that properly, then the next question you have, do you want to earn your way to financial independence in 2022? If you want to be financially independent, meaning you have reoccurring expenses that are matched with passive streams of income at 1x, let's say you have $1,000 worth of reoccurring expenses in your household. If you have passive income that comes in at $1,000 a month, you have a little bit of stability. But if you have $2,000 to your $1,000 of reoccurring expenses, you're now financially independent and not even a pandemic can stop you. And I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count how I can guarantee that. Would you like to know? Well, answer number three is I've done it for myself personally. And when I got myself out of debt, I created this little small course called Family Finance 101, and I actually started teaching it in our church. Keith, can you testify that I used to teach this program in our church several years ago? Hey Amen. Yes, you, yes, you did. <laughs> Absolutely. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We first started out with a program by Focus on the Family that actually was an eight-week course on Sunday nights at our church, Chicagoland Bible Fellowship, and only... 10% of the families that went through the program actually stayed in and applied it because eight weeks was just too long. And what I did is took the genius and brought it down to a third grade level. And in three hours, I did the same thing they were able to accomplish in eight weeks, in 30 minutes, in three hours. And we got people on the pathway to success. If you would like to do that, I want you to put in financial freedom in the chat right now. Now, my question is to you, do you want to earn your way to freedom? And what is Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is financial independence. Why do you want it, ladies? I thought you never asked. 
because your boss rules everything. And if you're not totally the boss of your business and your family and you work for somebody, I don't care if you make a million dollars a year, you are not free because it'll determine how much money you make, your personal freedom, when or not you'll be financially independent, how large or how small your family is. If you want one child or a hundred children, your income and your freedom determines that. Your vacation, when can you take vacation? Right now we're in the winter months and if you're in the health profession, and you're an educator, you can't take major vacations from the hospital, even though you have three, four years of vacation built up, they make you stay at the hospital. And how do I know? Because I work with a lot of medical professionals. My mother and my father have owned a professional medical practice for 28 years. So where do you live? That is determined by the boss and the boss is the money. And most importantly, how much stress do you have and how little stress you have. And at the end of the day, financial independence means options. If you like to have options and you want to be free, put, give me some freedom, DJ, right now. Hey, DJ, want to play that song to keep me dancing all night long? That's right. You want to be a DJ? Well, you got to get free first. That's right. So let's talk about the seven spheres of money system. And you can reach us at djthemoneycoach.com because number one, you got to have three out of the seven relationships proactively from accounting. We're going to teach you how to treat your personal household finances like a business. Treat your personal household finances like a business. Because in BK1, it says, build your foundation first on solid ground, your business, and then create your lifestyle. Does that make sense? So we're going to maximize the profits by treating your business personally, like a corporation, and we're going to lower your tax consequence. And right now we have three certified public accountants on our team. Matter of fact, the one that led us to helping out with you ladies tonight is our CPA extravagant James Lane Jr., CPA who worked for ExxonMobil and KPMG, and he actually did billion dollar tax returns and never came up short. How would you like him representing you one-on-one? -on -one? Absolutely. Insurance. We're going to show you how to secure your family and protect your wealth because our insurance professionals, including myself, I am life, health, property and casualty insured for the past 15 years. I'll show you how to buy insurance the right way and not be over premium and underinsured. Now, banking is really important. Right now, I hear you, ladies. Interest rates have never been this low, but there's also hitting fees inside mortgages, refinance home equity lines of credit that you don't know about, and I'm gonna break them down, and the industry is gonna hate me for it, but you'll love me. And then most importantly, we're gonna take that information and have Melvin Hobson put a financial plan together so you're gonna plan your business and you're gonna execute your freedom. If you like freedom, put freedom in the chat box. And now we're gonna get on the pathway to wealth. We're gonna teach you systematically every year how to acquire one real estate transaction, and we're gonna take that and create passive income to wealth, and then if you don't have the legal team together, I'm going to give you the number one legal advisor on the planet. And I might be, you know, humble in saying this, but Lisa K. Shebar is our residential attorney. She's actually been the litigation attorney for McDonald's hamburgers and BMI music. And she wrote most of the litigation manual and did all their international trademarks from the early 90s to the beginning of mid 2000s. That's amazing. So she's going to protect your ideas and create resources and protect your family. And then last but not least, when you reach that level of significance and you have one point to $2 million in assets in your household, she's gonna help you with a success to significance plan. So in the second assignment tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to read this one book called E-Myth by Michael Gerber. If this is exciting right now, put a fire in the chat box and let me know that we're doing a great job so far. And if not, fire Nick, not DJ The Money Coach. <laughs> So right now, let's get right in and tell you the importance of the Pay Yourself First program. And I hear you, ladies. You say, I know this stuff, DJ, but guess what? I want to challenge you. Are you intellectually knowing this stuff? Or are you a practitioner practicing those four dirty little words? Discipline, accountability, system, and plugging in the work. 90% of you do not do that. Trust me. You know how I know? I've sat down with 25,000 people, and I sit down with more professionals than any of them. And I'm talking about your income is $75,000 as an individual to $250,000 as a married or partnership couple. So I see the same thing. Big houses, big cars, and people suffering from quiet desperation because they're overstretched with credit. If that sounds like you, say, I've been there. 
and I want to get out of it. DJ, help me out. So the first thing we're going to do, pay yourself first, not second, and never third. Why are you working? You want to be the boss? You got to get control of your freedom, and you got to retire with dignity. So the first thing we're going to do, build that emergency fund, a three-month, a six-month, and a 12-month emergency fund. And why is that important? For every $10,000 that you make in income, and if you're a professional making 70000 plus, and you were to get sidelined, furloughed, or laid off because of a pandemic, that means that for every 10 grand, you got to have three months set aside in an emergency fund, not a checking account, not a savings account, an assigned emergency fund. So that's number one. Number two, you're going to access your Roth IRA, and you're going to put that together on an automatic pay plan where you're going to do this in the first 10 days of every month. Let me tell you this. When I got out of debt, I actually, first 10 days of every month, I paid all myself first before I paid my mortgage, before I paid my car. And since I did that right, I was able to pay off all of it. And then you're going to take advantage of the health savings account. Then you're going to maximize your 401k, your 403b, your self-employment retirement plan, or your Keo if you have a successful business. And you'll be able to put all this money together by working with a financial planner and a CPA and pay almost little to no taxes for every $79,000 you made in distributed profits, if you have your corporate entity set up properly and stop running your personal finance like personal and run it like a business, you better set aside in 10 to 20 years, $2 million, $250,000, and up to 5 to $7 million, no matter if you started at 25 or if you started at 35 or 55. So now what we're going to do, we're going to incorporate your lifestyle into your own business. And right now, ladies and you're going to get this book called Inc. and Grow Rich. This is a case study of all the type of corporations from 1099 self-employment to LPs, LLCs, general partnerships, C corporations, and S corporations to get you what I call right like rain. How many of y'all would like to be right like rain and be able to do whatever you want to do 24-7, 365? If that's you, say, I'm my own boss. I am my boss. Put that in the chat. That's right. You hear that cashier? So let's ring the cash for you. So let me share with you this. If you incorporate your lifestyle at a $50,000 level, you through tax planning legally can shed 15% to 30% off of taxes and put it right back into your own pocket. If you make a hundred grand, you can get up to $30,000 funneled right back to legally tax planning. And then you can use the rule of 72 with a 7% return and can invest from 300,000 to 1.2 million in 20 years. And then you can use this magic little tax IRS code called IRS CAFE 125. And let me ask you this question, ladies. Have you ever went to college while you were working for a corporation? If you have done that, put a yes in the chat box right now, because this is important. And let me tell you how the companies rip us off. So. When I was in school and I was going to become an accountant and I wanted to get my CPA, which I never did, my employer at the time said, DJ, you got to get an A and we'll give you 100% reimbursement for what you spend on your college tuition. If y'all heard that before, put your hands up in the chat box. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Now they told me if I get a B, I get 80% back. And if I get a C, I get no reimbursement. And my lying? Say, DJ, you're lying. But guess what CAFE 125 rule says? It says if you are a corporation and you are an employee of that corporation or an executive or above and you pass the class, you get 100% reimbursement. So tell me, what is your employer doing with that money when you get that C and that D? They put that money in their pockets, not in yours. I hate to be the bearer of bad fruit, but guess what? If you take advantage of this 125 rule that I'm showing you and administer your personal finances like a business, you will now flow up to 30% of your taxable income back to you. Would you be excited about that? If you're excited about that, put a fire in the chat box and say, DJ, rock the house, DJ. Woo, baby, baby. All right, so let's get back to the story. And if you don't like the exuberance and the excitement, I'm sorry because I'm free. And I'm excited about being free, ladies. Okay? So now we're going to take that. And through the CAFE 125 benefits, we're going to house your SSA, your self-directed IRA, your annuities. We're going to even take your vehicles and put them in your corporation and eliminate your tax liabilities. And we're going to eliminate your protection liabilities with your real estate and your assets. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you can exhale. Everybody together with me, exhale. 
waiting to exhale, yeah, but I'm talking about waiting to free exhale. So what you better do is take that $100,000 income and live like you're making 150. And that $50,000 income, you can live like you're making 75. Instead of chasing the $1 million lifestyle, all you gotta do is earn $8,333 a month in passive income, and you can live second to none on this planet like anybody. And I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count. Because again, I've sat down with 25,000 people over the past 20 years. And this is how they have been rolling to the hole. And I'm going to show you the same thing. So now I'm going to challenge you to go from being employee, executive, to being business owner. So we teach people how professionals can actually own their own businesses and take advantage of the business laws and take their skills, their expertise in products and services. And then we show them how to create the entity structure versus being a employee and nothing wrong with employee. I love employees, ladies, but why not operate like the corporations do the LLCs, the limited partnerships, the escorts, the general partners, and on the low end, the 1099 and get the same benefits. Cause let me share a little dirty little secret with you. The United States of America is an incorporation. Do you not know that we are in a corporation? Just go back to the Magna Carta back in 1512. And we can talk about that one-on-one -on -one and at the Q and A. So when you do this, you're going to take the liability and transfer it over to the business and you're going to stop playing the short game and play the long game and get massive security. And you're going to take your earned income and transfer over to residual income. And you're going to go from being a $250,000 income earner paying 40% in taxes to down to a residual and paying practically nothing if you got the right tax advisor. And like my grandfather told me, who never graduated from high school, he had an eighth grade education from New Orleans. And he put five children through college because he was not penny wise or dollars foolish. So instead of following the fads, we're going to follow the trends or you're going to go back to work. Woo! So let's show you why the $8,333 a month versus the million dollar lifestyle. So here are some websites, ladies and gentlemen, that you can actually access right now in America, in white America. The median income for an individual house is $79,900. And for black women, it's $50,337 for professional black women, or you only make 63 cents on every dollar that a white man and a white woman works. Don't get mad at DJ. These are the facts. Then you can go to this little website, which your president and your vice president, Retta, talked about. We're going to give you financial literary third-party people, bankrate.com. They're like JD and a power source. Anything in the financial world, from credit cards, student loans, home equity line of credit, they will tell you the best rated institutions while you work with your professional. And if you're affluent and your household income is over $150,000 a year, go to financialsamurai.com and get the true definition of influence. And here's the thing, go to the irs.gov and you'll find out that even though incomes are going up, but because inflation is extruding it right now at 6%, the average person, only 20% of individuals in the United States make over $60,000 a year. And then if you find this stuff entertaining, but also educational, go to duransburg.com, sevenspheresofmoney.com, and let's start living free life versus celebrity lifestyle, which is expensive. So here's the numbers. When I sat down with the 5,000 person and about the 25th family, I figured out this is the American dream. If you can buy yourself across America, this is Midwestern numbers, but they go you know, directly, rationally, and proportionally to the East Coast and the West Coast. A four bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage house with a note of 1841 and making $8,333 a month and all your expenses, two seven day vacations, contribution to your retirement, paying off a car note, paying for your children, paying for your utilities and your emergency fund, you will have less about twelve to $1,600 a month when you are consumer debt free. And again, I'll give you three guesses and the first two don't count how I can guarantee it. Because right now you're looking at the first member of that experiment. And then we had other members like Melvin, like Keith and like Nick and other black professional women in the E-Women Network, the One Woman Conference. If you can get excited about that, say, DJ, where is America headed? Put, where is America headed? Well, I thought you never asked, guess what? Personal debt is at an all-time record high, $14.8 trillion worth of debt, $92,000 average balances that most households are carrying. From These are millions and billions of dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we did see a spike in savings because of the pandemic, but prior to 2019, we were saving at less than 2%
of our take home pay across the board. So let me give you some tips now on the benefits of living smart over a 40 year period of time. From 25 to 65, if you started doing these things the right way and get a 9% compounded rate of return, you can put a bunch of money back into your pocketbook and retire with your dignity. Would you like to do that? Say, I wanna retire early with dignity, DJ. Put it in the chat box, please. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, and you know this, but are you applying it on a regular basis with your coupons on your apps on your smartphones? I was doing this before there were apps on a smartphone. Yep, I look young, but I've been around for a while. So if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you'll put an extra $101,000 in your pocket. If you don't buy lottery tickets and do a lot of heavy smoking and drinking, which I know you don't, I like to partake in the spirit every now and then, but I don't smoke. How about an extra 200,000? Then if you don't smoke them cigarettes, which are like $10 a pack, that's a half a million dollars. And then take your lunch. Did we not learn from being at home that we don't have to spend 10, $15, 20, 30 on lunch every day? It can easily be a grand a month. And then last but not least, I know y'all like your new cars, lady, because I do too, but you know what I do? I buy them pre-driven, let somebody else get it. And that's a total of $869,000, in essence, $2.4 million that we could put back in your pocketbook if you just had the access to them four dirty little words, discipline, accountability, plug into the seven spheres of money system and put your head down and go to work. So let's talk about raising children. How many people out there have children? I want to see a show of hands. If you have children, put your hands in the air. Yeah. And, and open up your pockets and see how empty they are because I got four of them. Trust me, they're expensive. <laughs> so let's get back to the show, all right? So let's talk about the cost or the investment of raising a child born in 2002 to 18. And here's what it looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Two-parent household under 49,000, you're gonna spend $7,000 per child every year. 76,000 household income on the same child, you're gonna spend $170,000 over 18 years or almost 10 grand a year. And if you, like me, make over $100,000 a year, you're gonna spend $14,000 a year per child. And guess what? That does not include the cost of college. So right now, I'm gonna give away one free gift. If you can tell me, the first one in the chat, why do we, from 49,000 to over 100,000, spend more money per child when it's only the same stuff. Who can answer that question for me in the chat? Nick, get the first person. The first person gets that right, they get a copy of the ABCs of Wealth, the Common Sense Strategy, Achieving American Dream. The more we earn, the more we spend. And yes, that is correct. So actually what that happens specifically, but you're right. So Nick, write down, is it uh, McDaniel? Write down, she's gonna be the recipient of the book tonight. And here's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of getting the pro kids, we get the Nikes. Instead of getting the shoes, we get the Gucci's and the wear bottoms because we feel guilty. And everybody, put your hand up if this is you. How many of y'all were born with a silver spoon in your mouth? If you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, put your hand up. But if you're like me, came from a single family household and had to work your way up, then we feel bad about our struggles so we don't let our children struggle. Hmm. Think about that. All right, cool. Let's go back to the, to the drawing board while we do that. All right. Are you guys having fun? If you're having fun, put your hands up. Put your hands up. All right, good stuff. All right, so now let's just move right along. All right, so let's talk about the rule of common sense. And what that means is if you save $2,000 today with a 3% return in 48 years, you have $8,000 in the bank. I don't know who can live off of $8,000, but people say, hey man, what if you got a double return? Then if you got a double return, your money would double. But based on the rule of 72, it doesn't work that way, ladies and gentlemen. It actually works this way. If you take the rule of 72 and take the amount of interest and divide it into 72, it tells you how quickly money doubles for you and how quickly money doubles against you. So if you're making a minimum payment on a credit card and it's 5,000 balance, it'll take you 38 years to pay it off. So that's why I have in the right column debt because most credit cards are charging 18%. And if you have a 12% return in 48 years, it's a half a million dollars. That's a half a million more than most people that look like us at the end of retirement. I hate to be the bearer of bad fruit, but that's the norm, it's not the exception to the rule, all right? So let's talk about credit card companies and, and manufacturers and department stores. And these are just two examples. You can plug in Target, Neiman Marcus, whatever you love. But here's the deal, what business are they in? Sears thought they were in the manufacturing and the merchandising business, but they were actually in the credit card business. They made majority of their money in the credit card business and now their Sears credit card is called Discover Card. Hmm, imagine the, the possibility. Now, that's just like pick on them either. Let's talk about this little French company called Jacques Pinier. 
and during this time in Black Friday and Christmas season, you want to delay your actual purchase, but you want it now and pay for it later. So guess what Jacques Pinye came out with? They said, hey, by the means on a regular charge balance of $500, your payment used to be $60, but now under the new low rate of 3%, you will pay only $15 in your first scheduled monthly payment. Now everybody read this with me. Now you can buy what you want today, not what you need. Thus you become a victim of the credit card sneaky operation, which yours truly, $60,000 can testify. Woo! So now what we're going to teach you in our Family Finance 101 course is we're going to teach you how to accelerate your debt and give you an actual debt freedom date. We're going to show you that every dollar you spend in gross money is actually taxed at a dollar point two five. And right now with super inflation, that's almost one dollar and 40 cents for every dollar you spend. You will pay 40 cents extra in service in the debt. And this is how we will roll your debt systematically. So let me tell you by a show of hands, how many people are homeowners? Let me see. Put your hands up. If you're a homeowner, put your hand up. If you just refinanced your house, put your hand up. If you just got a home equity line of credit, put your hand up. If you got that 2.5 interest rate, put your hand up. If you've been refinancing, you think you're smart enough and you are smarter than the bank, put your hand up. Now, let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, I used to be an owner of a mortgage bank. Yes, indeed. I used to be an owner of a mortgage bank. So let me tell you a little quick secret. Is there a thing called yield, spread, uh, yield premium spread? And, and annual interest rate. And here's the thing. So let me go back to the slide and tell you why this is so important. Because this little rule, it could be either your best friend or your worst friend. It's called the 50-25 rule. What that means is that on a regular 30-year mortgage, 90% of your first payments for the first 50% of your loan is all interest or what I like to call juice. And then when you get to year 15, you're paying all you know, your actual principal. And so and luckily, if you bought the house right and best cases didn't refinance and refi, you probably only own 25 to 40% of equity. But if you would actually do this and take the accrued interest and break it down and make payments to it in every seven days of the first of the month, because interest doesn't accrue until the 13th day, you can lop off for every $100,000 on a $300,000 house, $183,000. And I hear you ladies, you can also do this on a 15 year loan. And I can show you through our program, and I've done this for hundreds of people, we can actually pay your house off in seven to 10 years. If that sounds exciting to you, and you just refinance, and you still would like to do that and not cost anything, put your hand up, be honest, and get that freedom back. That's what I'm talking about. And that's called the 50-25 rule. That means that 50% of your payments are attributed to the interest. And if you own a $100,000 house, you will be giving back the bank one to two X more than what you paid. If you own a $300,000 house, two to three X. And if you own a half a million above, you will give them back almost four X in interest. And in our community, the average person refinanced three times. And by the time they get to the end of their loan, they end up only owning, of owning about 25% equity. That's sad. And that's what's killing us in our community. And I know you professional ladies, you look good, you smell good, and you're not a victim of that. But the statistics say just the opposite. Don't kill the messenger, kill the system. And that's what I'm here to do. So with that said, we're going to talk about saving later in life. And Melvin Hobson, our registered investment advisor, he's going to come on and tell you why, as a registered investment advisor, how you can actually manage money in your portfolio for the savings investment part of this training. Melvin, step on in and take it out the park, baby. All right, great. A lot of people say, I will save later in life. And the problem is, is that, you cannot get past doing the work. You know, you have to do the work up front to reap the benefits on the back end. 25-year-old saves two fifty a month for 10 years and stops. At 67, he or she will have over $401,000. But a 35-year-old will save that same two fifty a month for 37 years until 87. The problem here is that they did not put in that first 10 years. So that first 10 years is going to just bode well for the 25-year-old and not so much for a 35-year-old. So, and then and with a 7% return, your money's doubling about every 10 years. So if you don't understand the rule of the tool, which is uh, compound interest, you will be crushed by it. Uh, the finance companies, as DJ has already talked about, understand that rule and that's why they're willing to give you money at a free teaser rate uh hoping that you don't make a payment or something comes up and you don't pay it off 
when that 0% interest goes away. Now, let's look at mutual funds, okay? So you have mutual funds are made up of stocks, they're made up of bonds, um, and so therefore, when you're buying into those mutual funds, uh, A shares, B shares, and C shares are normally what you're looking at. A shares, you're gonna pay that first little, uh, they, they're the most expensive up front, but over the long term, they are the cheapest. Uh, B shares uh, have a deferred sales charge associated with them. Uh, they're cheaper uh, if you're going to just systematically do it. But after seven years, B shares turn into A shares. Uh, so typically, uh, most people do not get B shares or the industry doesn't offer B shares very much anymore. C shares, usually what you get uh, when you have an advisor and you're only going to keep uh, money in that particular mutual fund for maybe a year or two. You are charged a fee every year for that C share, so therefore they tend to be more expensive than B shares or A shares. Um, but most people don't know that if they're getting money uh, from a, um, a state plan uh, or they just don't know. And the problem is, if you don't know, you can become a victim to pay more in fees. Uh, but that's one of the things that, you understand, that you'll see when you're looking at your 401k uh, statement. Uh, some of those fees there, you just don't know, but you need to understand what they are. Now, when I'm talking to clients, I'm always trying to get them to max out the buckets. We talk about different buckets that you have, and you want to be able to put the money in the right bucket at the right time so that you get the maximum benefit. Obviously, we've talked about the 401k plans and the matching programs. That's free money. So you want to put as much money as you need to put in there to get the most out of that bucket. The second bucket uh, is a Roth IRA. And no matter what color you are, how big you are, how skinny you are, there's only two things that you never can avoid, and that's taxes and death, all right? Roth IRAs are are funded with after-tax money. Therefore, the government can go double dip there. Life insurance, cash value, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, is the other place where you put money into and grows tax uh, tax advantage. The third place is a, the third bucket here is the employer plan or the SCP. So if you have your own little side gig or company, uh, you have a self-employed pension plan that you should be putting money into. This helps you to grow your money for retirement down the road. And also number four is the tax deferred annuity. Uh, that's a, the fourth place to put money into. And so if there's an emergency, uh, you have all these buckets to work for. And the one the one bucket that I didn't mention, or it's not really here, we talk about the emergency plan or the emergency fund. So you want to have at least two months of emergency fund money in the bank, okay? And that's so that if the engine breaks down, if you need to uh, fix the, t the TV or the furnace or something really major, especially because it's getting cold now, you do not want to go to your credit card to fund that purchase uh, at 18% or 24% interest, you're looking at something that's going to cause your bill to double minimum of four times, possibly uh, even more than that at 24%. So that money doubles every three years. So you want to use the, the rule of the tool in your favor. If you're paying more in debt, it's not in your favor. It's in the credit card company's favor. All right, let's look at the mutual fund rate of return. So you want to get dividends. Uh, what a dividend is, you buy into a company. The company decides we did well this quarter. We're going to pay everybody who owns a piece of the company, which is a share. So everybody who owns a share in the company, we're going to pay them a certain amount of money to say thank you for investing with us. That's what a dividend is. Capital gains is when your mutual fund sells off some of the shares in that portfolio. And what you get back is what is considered capital gains. Uh, and the, and the, the final way to grow your money in a mutual fund is appreciation. If you buy Apple at $10 a share and now it grows to $100 a share, you know, that growth is your appreciation and therefore it's a paper asset until you sell it, but that's what appreciation looks like. So let's look at the power of asset allocation. Some people, I uh, don't understand what this is. Uh, show me the whole screen. Uh, but what you're looking at is how does your money uh, do well for you? And 
if you're investing with your company, uh, if you did 25, 25, 25, 25, it would look more like the right side. Uh, everything is pretty much equal. But really what we're saying here is that based on how old you are, uh, how much risk you can tolerate, uh, how much, uh, there are eight types of risk that we'll talk about, uh, that I'll talk about with you later. Uh, tax is one of them. Uh, sequence of returns is another one of them. We're not going to talk about all of them right now, but it's that type of risk that affects the return on your portfolio and how it looks. So for someone who uh trying to reduce their risk let's say you start in january uh and you buy a company there's two companies one uh has a a value that goes from ten dollars down to eight dollars back up to ten dollars at the end of six months and then you have one that starts at eight dollars and slowly increases that's what this chart is showing you but the reality of it is is that if by dollar cost averaging if you put a little money in every month even though the price may drop, when it comes back, the, the shares that you bought at a lower rate or a lower price will actually be worth more. So for people who are younger, they, they, sh they should be okay with the market going up and down, up and down, up and down. For a person who's older, they have less time for their dollar cost averaging to work for them because they have less time. Uh, and last year's. So show the last part. You don't you don't have the last part. So in essence, with the last slide, what you're looking at is over time, the person who's buying with the uh, the shares that go down then go back up actually will have a higher rate of return than the person who's just buying uh, a share that's slowly uh, creeping up over time. Here's an example of the market uh, over the last uh, is based in decades. So goes back as far as the Great uh, Depression. You will see that uh, most people tend to invest in a form that's like the uh, treasury bill or government bond. And the reason that is, is because they buy into the hype of is FDIC insured or is safe or it's you know backed by the government. You don't, you don't know this because they don't tell it to you, but the government can take 99 years to pay you back all the money that's FDIC insured. The other uh, 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 lines here that you're looking at here speak to investing in companies. Uh, large stock companies have uh, asset valuations over uh, $10 billion. Uh, small cap uh, companies have um, valuations of over $1 billion. And so as you look at the stocks here, you'll see that over this period of time, they've averaged over 12.1% for the small uh, stocks, small cap stocks, large cap stocks have averaged 10%. Uh, government bonds has averaged about 5.5%. The thing you have to understand is that if your money is not making 2.93%, your buying power is going down year over year. And that means that if you can afford a bread, uh, a loaf of bread for a dollar uh, this year, next year, it's going to cost more than a dollar and you're not going to have the money. So one of the things that we talk about also is protecting your family and looking at how you do that. Life insurance has been around for over 400 years here in America, and there's different types of uh, insurance that you can get. Now, for people who don't have a lot of money, they still need to protect their family. Term life insurance is the cheapest. So if you're paying $1,000, uh, if you're paying $2 per thousand, if you got 20,000, you would just multiply that 2.64 times uh, uh, 20, and that would tell you how much you're paying for that term insurance of 20,000. Now you have term insurance is the cheapest, uh, and it depends on your personal situation, whether you do the term insurance or whether you do uh, protection with savings. Uh, and we'll talk more about which one is the best for you and your family. Uh, term insurance, like I said, is cheaper, uh, but you don't have any of the other uh, caveats and benefits that are available. Uh, you know, universal uh, life has a cash value early on in the process. 
variable life uh, has a different uh, fluctuation. Uh, variable universal life allows you, if you're younger, to invest in the market and try to capture some of those gains. Uh, and whole life, uh, as you're paying for your whole life, it tends to be a flat rate. But again, just looking at the numbers, you may say, well, I'll just buy term insurance. Uh, well, life insurance has changed a lot over the last 40 years, and term insurance may not be able to give you any cash if you come if you are diagnosed with a, a mental a cognitive problem, where some of the other life insurance policies will give you cash. Uh, so we will talk about that more later. Uh, if you like, uh, let's move on. Now, some of the people that we've worked with over the many years include uh, the Minority Whip in the Ninth District. Uh, DJ has, uh, has a letter here uh, where he's worked with them. Uh, we've worked with uh, the uh, RC Cola. Uh, both of us have you know, worked with them, as you see uh, my letters there, uh, helping their employees uh, make some transitions. Uh, and it, it, it's, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at him. All right, I, I, I'll stop here. I'll let DJ talk about this because uh, Miss Absolutely. USA. Absolutely. So what we're excited about, ladies, is that one of the most important things about buying insurance is there is a way to buy insurance, which Melvin talked about, just want to uh, resummarize this. So I want to ask you, ladies, in the chat, and the first person to get this right, not the people who are on the executive committee. You cannot participate because I already told you the secret. So you are automatically disqualified. Okay? So when you go to the gas station, what is the unit of measure that you buy your gas by? Can the first person put that into the chat for me, please? And when you go to the grocery store, when you buy bread, what is the unit of measure that you buy bread by? So the first two people to do that, Nick, we're going to reward them with what we call the cost of financial ignorance. So can we get someone to give us those two answers? What's the unit of measurement when you buy gas? And what's the unit of measurement when you buy bread? Now, the importance of this is that you buy insurance by a unit of measurement when everything's equal. When your income, your health, and your credit scores are equivalent, you then buy insurance by the cost per thousand, which is what Melvin was talking to you about. And why that is important, because when it's sold to us, specifically in our community, they tell us, number one, how much can you afford and how much do you want? And then you pay what you can afford and get what you think what you want. And then you are what we call over premium and underinsured. And I'll give you three guesses why I can guarantee you this happens to 90% of you. And the sharper you are, it probably happens even more. Never go into a battle and pretend you know everything without asking the right questions. So Nick, our business manager, I want him to chime in real quickly, Nick, in 60 seconds. Tell them when you didn't even know us from a hole in the wall, what was your experience three years ago when you came in and got into a webinar like this and then got our family finance member program and work directly with Melvin and I. Do that for us in 60 seconds, Nick. Sure, sure. And before I do that, uh, we have a correct answer from Miss Regina Caldwell. So congratulations to Regina. You will be getting a copy of The Cost of Financial Ignorance. She answered the gallon and the loaf as those units of measurement. Uh, so my experience working with uh, the Seven Spheres of Money system so when you start working with the seven spheres of money system, you have to provide your financial information because this is individualized, tailored coaching uh, dependent on your specific financial situation. So I sent all of my insurance uh, policies, which included my car insurance, my life insurance, my retirement funds, and within the first 30 seconds of meeting with DJ and Melvin, they looked at my life insurance policy and said, whoa, 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 you are paying too much money for this amount of coverage. You have a $100,000 uh, term life uh, insurance policy and you're paying, and you're paying about 40, between 40 and $50 a month. You know, you, you are paying way too much for this. You know what? We can get you into a better situation, which they did. So they got, they got me right. Uh, I'm now I'm paying about the same for a $500,000 policy. So that was the first thing. Uh, the other thing was they looked at my, my car insurance policy. Again, within the first 30 seconds, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're paying this much for, for your car insurance? You're paying $200 a month? 
on your premium with one vehicle in in uh in New Jersey, yeah, you're you're paying way too much. You should be paying much less. And they and uh, DJ and his team were able to help me to cut that premium in half. So I went from paying two hundred dollars a month to one hundred dollars a month uh, just by implementing those those strategies that that they taught me. And you know what, ladies, this is important because we're experts at doing this. So actually, Nick was paying three times what I was paying for three vehicles, and I'm twice his age. Isn't that something? And the same thing for life insurance. I have a policy right now that's a half a million dollars that I only pay $30 a month for. And the average person my age pays at least $150 for that same policy. Why is that important to you, ladies? Because we will look at your financial information. You will fill out what's called a survey, and it'll tell us where you are. And then we'll look at your budget as professionals and find the excess spending and turn it back into your consumer debt attack plan, your debt freedom plan, your financial independence plan. We'll help you fund that Roth fully, that HSA fully, that 401k fully, and you're not taking any extra money out of your pocket. How many of you can get excited about that, if that makes sense? Put a fire in the chat box and we're going to wrap this thing up and get back on it. And here's what we want to share with you is that we also give back to the community. That's right. We actually help. Miss America in 2008 raised $10,000 for her Title I school that her mom worked for, and we're proud to say that. We also get paid a tremendous amount of money for bringing you what we brought today to institutions like the Montgomery Regional Airport. We handle all their financial education for all their employees, ladies. And we believe in Black cooperative economics. We work with small business owners and help them get financing, get their credit, help them get in proper insurance vehicles, and we support them Four companies a year. We actually provide capital to help their dreams come true. And we're very proud about that. So let me show you that the truth is the truth. This is me back in the day, broke. And at that time, I'm standing in front of that car that's a 92 Geo Tracker. And I'm ashamed to say at the time that car got repoed when I was working in the car business while I was at the job in front of like 10 salespeople. At the time, that was the lowest point in my life, ladies and gentlemen, but I turned that lemon into lemonade, got myself educated, got my securities license, and immediately started helping out the community, first in my church, then to the YMCA, and to the variety of different other institutions. And two decades later, ladies and gentlemen, we have turned that into what we call the ultimate pom-pom lifestyle. Plenty of money, peace of mind, and now we go around the world and we give and we receive blessings to help people win. How would you like to be 24-7, 365, doing what you want to do? Coach your coaches, your, your son's team. Go to the World Series when your Cubs win. Send your son the next year to the World Series because he's an Astro fan and you're not. And better yet, how would you like to start a STEM program about baseball and how you can get science, technology, and engineering, and math, and actually instead of being a baseball player, you can work in the suite in the CEO suite. That's what we do for our community. So I want to show you, I'm also a full-time daddy to two lovely girls that I work and be with them. I'm their professional chauffeur, ladies. Every morning I get up at 6 a.m. and take them to their private school. And that's my full-time job. And I don't get paid for it. <laughs> but I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. And that all started when I sat down with Melvin and I sat down with my CPA almost 18, 20 years ago, and I put a plan together and I followed it step by step. So what you've seen tonight, if you were to a la carte this in individual services that is offered in corporate America and things of that nature doing open enrollment, it's over $12,000 worth of services and it's worth every investment. And what we want to be able to do for you, ladies and gentlemen, is now participate in Q&A and we want you to ask us any question that you can ask, and we're going to answer that question for you and show you the power of the seven spheres of money team. So I'm going to turn this back over to our host, and then we'll come back and we got something special for you. Did I catch our host off guard? Meaning no, I think I'm doing <laughs> the I'm I'm doing the questions, DJ. All right. So we have a few um, that are uh, that came out of the chat. So uh, Regina Caldwell, who won the book that we talked about, she congratulations, know, Regina. 
Um, what do you say to those who advise uh, not to pay off a mortgage? Well, I look at it two ways. Number one, if you are a person that actually want to be 100% free in this world, and you don't ever want to have somebody tell you what to do, I'm going to pay the mortgage off. Because here's why. Even though you can get interest rates at free money right now, unless you are a sophisticated investor, I'm going to, and, and Melvin chime in, unless you are a sophisticated investor or an accredited investor, what does that mean? An accredited investor means three straight years, your tax returns are $200,000 certified and your net worth outside of your house and your home is over $1.5 million. Those are the individuals and sophisticated investors, they start syndication investment groups. Those people know how to use what's called arbitrage, Regina. That means they can take a low interest rate, refinance the house and take that difference and parlay it to a 12, 15% return every 10 years. Here's the reality and the sad factor is you're probably not one of those and I'm not saying that you're not, but nine out of 10 times, most people I sit down are not. So it's better to pay off that mortgage because we can show you how to do that, Regina, in seven to 10 years from scratch. I mean, literally, if you bought a brand new home today in Dallas and it was $400,000, and even though you're paying 2.15% interest rate, because of the 5025 rule, I can actually show you how to pay that house off in 10 years by two things. Number one, going to a bi-monthly payment. Number two, breaking down the accrued interest and paying on top of the principal, which actually would accelerate nine years off just like that. And then number three, you can actually take that money that you saved, which on a $400,000 house on 30 years, you're going to pay $1 million for the same house. So unless you can make $1 million and keep the interest rate low as a sophisticated or a accredited investor, you'd be better served putting that $300,000 in interest in your own pocket. Melvin, am I telling the truth the, about this, Melvin? The, the rule of the tool is, if the money you're making is less than the money that you're paying, uh, don't do it. That, I mean, that's the, that's the simple rule for the unsophisticated person. If my interest rate is 4%, but I can only make 2%, then don't do it. If you can make, you know, the difference of 4%, you're paying 3%, but you can make 7%, then you're making 4% on the difference. Then it makes sense for you to do it. And you can take your time doing it because, you know, you're going to get that 4% every year. And that's money that's compounding. So the rule of the tool is you want to compound your money that you're making, not that your debt that you're accruing. That's the simple way to put it. Exactly. And what you want to better do, Chantel and Regina, is this. First, sit down with a professional. Again, remember I said who you should take advice from and whom you shouldn't? Be weary of the person that's telling you that and say, hey, show me you've done it. Show me you. And for me, as a sophisticated investor, I got to get 3X, to be honest with you. Hey, can I, I chime in real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Keith. Real quick, uh, just add to that, you know, that, that question. Um, in doing so, you're, you're missing out on opportunity. So it's an opportunity cost in that. Um, yeah. So that's what Dale and, and, and Melvin are talking about. You want to take advantage of the opportunity. If you don't pay the house off, uh, I think that was a question. You're missing out on that opportunity. So it's an opportunity cost that's also factored into that. Exactly. And what's going to happen too is that your taxes are going up every year. But if you pay off your house in advance, not only did you put that $100,000, $200,000 back in your own portfolio, you are now able to pay your reoccurring expenses that are escalating. That's the answer. And again, sit down with the professional first because each individual situation is different. Don't get a cookie cutter solution. And what we call right here, we say we create financial independence, one solution at a time. And we believe to crawl, walk, run. Because here's the deal. When you get out of debt, you want to stay out of debt. Does that make sense? What's your next question? Next question is, I have a 401k. Um, what's the best vehicle to roll over if I'm not going to a job with a 401k? Well, that's a very good question, and it's not an easy, easy answer. Uh, so which basically what that means is that I would have to sit down with you and see what your current or your previous employer has to offer to see what your money is invested in with that old 401k. I've worked with several companies that MERS sold went bankrupt. So if you have money in that old 401k that may have money 
tied up into stock for that company. Let's say your company is going to go public soon. Well, just like companies go public, they also, like GM, you know, go bankrupt for whatever reasons. Mm -hmm. Delta has gone bankrupt for whatever reason. So it's not just a leave it there because they're doing great. Mm -hmm. We have to discuss, you know, where you're going to go, what you're going to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then and that's, that's, the, that's my best answer for that. Yeah. Okay. And then my final question, um, when paying down debt, right? So pay off the highest interest, and I'm guessing this is credit cards, right? Mm -hmm. uh, paying off the highest interest or the lowest balance first? And then what's the science behind that? So great question. So let me, let me handle this. So I believe right. that it's not interest, it's time and debt. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. It's not interest, it's time and debt. So the first thing you should do, attack the little debt first. And here's the reason why. Because typically we'll go after the big debt and it may have a lower interest rate, but as soon as we can't make that extra payment on that big debt, what happens? We get depressed, we start beating ourselves up and we stop. But if I have a oh, debt of a hundred bucks and I got a debt of a thousand and I go after the hundred, guess what? I pay that hundred off, I go have myself a little glass yeah. of wine <laughs> and then I celebrate and then I pay off that 200. Then I roll the debt to the 400. Then I roll the debt again to the thousand. And before you know it, you will have eliminated all of your debt. So the science behind that is more peace of mind and strategy. Again, yeah, yeah, all yeah. walk, run. And if you've done it the right way, because debt is a function of time, not interest. Does that make sense? And yeah. now that you've done that and you've gotten the principles down, you never go back into debt. Because again, at the beginning of this presentation, 525 credit score, $40,000 worth of consumable debt. And if I went after the 40 grand first and then I couldn't make the payments for whatever, I stopped. But if I go after the 100, the 500 to get to the 1,000, not only am I rolling down and accelerating my debt, once it's gone, I now created that instant discipline and now I'm putting that money in my Roth, my 401k, my emergency fund, my extra investment that I can afford to take the risk because I've hedged my bets the proper way. That's, that's the way Chantel. Yeah. Chantel, that's, that's called... Uh, physiology, psychology, uh, I feel good, dopamine drip, you know, you hit the shot of wine because you feel good, okay, I'm going to do that again, you know, right? and, and that's, that's what keeps you motivated, that keeps you yeah. going, that keeps you working out. Yeah, makes perfect sense, it, it does, it makes perfect sense because you, you want to feel good about doing it, I think it gives you that energy and get recharged to say, okay, I can get mm -hmm. to the next one, so, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so um, that's all I have for the questions. Um, so here's what we, here's what we want to do. do you have anything? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's what we want to do. So let, let, we want to share with what we want to be able to offer you, you ladies, yes. because you deserve to have something great and only you can have. So what we're going to do real quickly, Keith, I want you to pop on, Keith. Give us two minutes because this is the part where we don't want to have people holding the empty hat out when we all go to heaven, right? So Keith, take two minutes and tell them the importance of this and why we see a lot of times in our community specifically that we're holding the hand. And I'm talking about people who make quarter million dollars that they don't plan properly and they still are having the hand in the, in the hat for them to get things done. So Keith, take two minutes to do that. And then I'm gonna share with you ladies an amazing offer to educate yourself so we can, so we can get that happen. Yes, no real quick. On the accounts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. So go right ahead, Keith, and give us two quick minutes and, and summarize that. And then we're going to give you guys an amazing offer right. that we think will be almost impossible to turn down. So um, one of the services that I offer, I'm a licensed uh, a life insurance agent. I've been doing this for at least 14 years. One of the things that I offer is, is pre-funeral planning. You can now do that with a life insurance agent. Um, when, when you pre-plan your funeral, basically you're saving yourself money. You, you, you're allowing your family to uh, not get involved in emotional spending, um, and you're in control of the, uh, the 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 planning of the funeral. So traditionally, you would go to a funeral home, sit with a, a funeral director. They're going to map out a plan for you, all the costs. They're going to make themselves a beneficiary, and they're going to be in control of that that plan. Okay, nowadays uh, with technology and everything, you can do this yourself. You can plan it yourself. You be in control. You can name your own beneficiary. So if there's any monies left over, uh, you are uh, your family will benefit from that. So it eliminates again. It saves you money. It eliminates emotional spending. You're in control uh, of that. And again, with te technology, you can sit at home and plan your own funeral. I work with a, a partner with a company that <clears throat> go to right to a, a web link, and you can plan everything out right there 
on the uh, on the on the website. You can even pull up an estimate. You don't even have to pay for it yet. You can just estimate what the cost is going to be uh, before you even dive in and do it. So uh, that's that's my two minutes. Uh, so it saves you money. It's a good it's a good option. So with that said, ladies, so let me share with you. Have you all enjoyed, has this been a value add proposition for you tonight if you never see us again? If it's been a value add, please put some, some claps in the chat so we know, because if not, I hate to have to fire Nick tonight. I really hate to have to fire him. <laughs> so let me share with you ladies what we put together for you that we think is going to be phenomenal for you to take advantage of. And if you want to do it now or you want to do it later, it's going to be available for you. So here's what I want to show you, because I want you all to have the pom-pom lifestyle. If you would like to have a pom-pom lifestyle, we want to offer you the National Coalition 100 Black Women, Inc., Dallas Metropolitan Chapter, what we call the exclusive ABCs of wealth by DJ the Money Coach in the Seven Spheres of Money to give you the pom-pom lifestyle. That's plenty of money and peace of mind. So we're going to give you our core family finance one-on-one course. It's 18 modules. It's three hours. It's an encyclopedia, ladies. So if you just need to know how to tackle that, should I pay off my house? Or should I not pay off my house? You just go right to that module. If you want to know, should I get a will, a power of attorney, because I have elderly parents that need to have the power of attorney for incapacitation, you just go right to that. Or if you want to know how to teach your child how to become a millionaire and set them up and put $21 aside from age 12 to the time they're 50, and no matter what they do, they'll have a million dollars in the bank, you just go to, I want to be a millionaire. And so what we're going to give you is an actual blueprint and strategy to become debt-free in 30 days. Now, if you got $50,000 worth of debt like I had, are you going to pay it all off in 30 days? Absolutely not. But the blueprint and working with us side by side in 30 days will get it taken care of for you in 12 to 36 months. We're going to show you how to take your credit and increase it by 30 to 100 points in 30 days or less and get you on the pathway to the 800 credit club. And we'll show you how to pay off your home no matter if you just bought it today in seven to 10 years. And then most importantly, if you're entrepreneurs and you want to live that real pom-pom lifestyle, we're going to show you how to accumulate $8,333 a month in passive income by a strategy of acquiring one asset per year at a very feasible investment, less than what you normally put in your 401k. And we're going to give you our ABCs of Wealth book. We're going to give you a book on how to buy insurance the right way, how to buy homeowner's insurance, auto and life. And that's in total value of over $3,100. But if you are willing to invest right now today, we're going to give you also two comprehensive consultations with yours truly, DJ the Money Coach, and yours truly, Melvin Hobson. And matter of fact, I'm going to even sweeten it even more for you, ladies. We're going to give you a bonus with Keith as well. So you'll get three consultations valued at $1,500 if you decide that a dollar a day is worth your investment and we will double satisfaction guarantee it if that makes sense because we want you to have a life like this. We want you to come live on the pom-pom lifestyle which is plenty of money and peace of mind because we really enjoyed talking to you tonight and this is in conjunction with the Black Friday that coming up and you know what all of us normally gonna do? We're gonna be buying all that stuff. And honestly, in 60 days after the holiday is over, you're not even going to know where that stuff went. And so I challenge you, why not invest in yourself and set your children up? Because here's what will happen. You're going to get this financial Bible. And I can guarantee you, if you read each chapter in here and when it went to invest and vet a professional, you can find out if they're the real deal. So we'll teach your child how to become a millionaire by just setting $21 aside every month. I have four children that we taught about investing at age seven to 17. They have dividend stocks that they invest themselves. And they sit down with Melvin and they sit down with our program and call it Teach a Child How to Fish. And then here's the thing that happens at the end, because you're gonna have this, is finishing life right. You know, and what Keith talked about, it gives you personal dignity because these funeral directors, they will feast on you. So that's what we would like to offer. It's been a blessing to help you out. And this is going to be available for the next 24 hours. But if you want to access tonight, we'll give you an additional $100 off to take advantage of the program because Black Friday should be an investment proposition, not a spending proposition. And I'll even send you my parody on the new song, 
by uh, Bruno Mars and Silk Sonic called Smoking Out the Window. We have a new tune called Spending Out of the Window by yours truly. So I've enjoyed uh, sitting down and sharing this information with you. And it's been a blessing on behalf of my business manager, Nick Westbrooks, on behalf of my partner, Keith Squalls, of over 27 years. He started in my first cleaning business that we took to seven figures. And my number one right-hand man, Melvin Hobson, who's been with me for 18 years. I would challenge you, if you can find a better organization in middle-class America, and especially for Black professional women, I'll turn and shut down my business. So I thank you very much, and it's been a blessing, and I'll turn it back over to you, lovely ladies, and thank you for having us. Wow. Well, thank you so very much, Mr. Durnsberg and your team. That was an excellent presentation. Um, very high energy, super, super, super high energy. I took notes um, to make sure that I follow, um, I adhere to those four dirty words. Like I, I took my notes on the four dirty words here, discipline, accountability, invest in a system, and you have to do the work. And then I thought the advice from the people that you take your advice from was very, very beneficial. And that um, what I really liked was leadership follows leaders. Excellent point there. And spiritual leadership. Um, that was excellent because I think that's very important for anyone to have. And definitely um, talk to people who are striving to go in the same direction that you're striving to go in business. You know, like you said, talk to people who um, are where you're going or at least striving to be where you are. So I think the information was great. We are grateful to you, to your team, Mr. Melvin, um, your HR professional, your number one right-hand man. I am also in human resources. So the information on open enrollment, we are going through that right now with open enrollment explaining, you know, why do an HSA versus an FSA, things of that nature, maximizing your contributions to your 401k. So that information was very, very helpful. To Mr. Keith Squalls, um, your business partner, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us, um, sharing your personal testimony um, of how this program has helped you. And Mr. Nick Westbrooks, um, pre-needs. Definitely um, something that everyone should consider um, when planning our funerals so that we don't have to do a GoFundMe. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Um, on behalf of our president, Ms. Sonia Irby and Vice, first Vice President, Reda Washington McCoy, our chair of the economic development team, Ms. Kimberly, Kimberly Thomas Grant, and our entire committee, we sincerely thank you for your time, for your presentation, for sharing your knowledge and your expertise. You guys will see all of his websites as well as the QR code um, to make it easy tonight for us to share in that special that you are offering for the low, low price of $3.97, $3.97. So thank you again. And at this time, I will turn it over to our first vice president, Reda Washington McCoy. Well, was that not an exciting, high energy evening, ladies? I think of an evening well spent. Again, I just want to echo what my coalition sister said and thank all of you for joining us this evening. We also want to thank our participants for joining us this evening. And we hope that you definitely took a lot of notes. I did the same thing. My paper is like all black and white now because there's notes everywhere. We hope everyone took notes, but we also hope that uh, like uh, Mrs. Caldwell said, that you snap the QR code. We'll send out all of uh, Mr. Duransburg's information after the presentation. Hopefully you snap the QR code and took down all of his contact information so that you can follow up, so that you can have that pom-pom lifestyle that he talked about this evening, him and his associates. And so we appreciate you for joining us. We also want to just leave you with some things to think about. Again, economic empowerment is one of the pillars of our organization, and we want to make sure that we are always thinking about what we can do to shift our mindsets, how we're going to shift from, uh, from our mindsets into our banking and savings and investing, how we think about those today, how we shift our mindsets on what we think about credit and credit cards, and also how we 
how we can impact our uh, communities. When we uh, achieve economic empowerment, we need to share that. And one of the things that we want to leave you with as an organization is that we always want to make sure and be mindful that we need to share and advocate for our entire communities in the area of economic empowerment. At this time, we also want to invite you to uh, support our organization. We will be participating in um, the uh, give, uh, Giving Tuesday that normally happens after Thanksgiving. Uh, and so if you would, please text give to nc 100 bwdm to 44321 and you can support us. If you can't remember that, please snap our QR code and continue to follow our organization and you can give through our link tree. There is a link on our link tree uh, along with all of our social media assets all of our website information and all of our uh, email addresses where you can continue to contact us. So again, on behalf of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Inc., Dallas Metropolitan Chapter, led by Miss Sonia Irby, we want to thank you for joining us this evening, participating in our program, and we hope you continue to follow us. We have some more exciting content in this Sisternomic series on December 2nd and December 16th, so continue to follow us and look for that information to come. Thank you and have a great evening.